That'll work. <laughs> Not that you have to. Uh, hey, Zuri. Okay. <laughs> All right. The Madison County Board of Education is now called to the <coughs> June 1st, 2017 work session, followed by a special session. And I believe we can go ahead and get started. You want to come and help us up in prayer? Sure. Okay. That'd be great. All right, dear Lord, thank you for this time we can come together and just uh, thank you for the success we have had and hope everybody has a great some vacation and bless us as board members as we do our work here. In your name, amen. Amen. All right, we'll start off with an update. There was uh, yesterday um, our system was recognized as a, uh, as a national model <coughs> uh, and how we've implemented our STEM program really uh, kind of evaluated with advanced placement. And there were some national kind of folks in yesterday in Huntsville to recognize us, and that was the National Mass Science Initiative, which is centered out of Texas. Uh, the Department of Defense had a representative there, um, a local three-star general, and uh, an A-plus college radio and the school's foundation board was there too. But uh, of our growth of how we've implemented and sustained an advanced placement program, they, um, uh, and Alabama was using this opportunity to celebrate how they've had full implementation uh, state uh, statewide for all military connected schools so we have military connected schools in our district so that's why the DOD's involvement is there and um, and uh, Mr. Wilson is going to show a few a few slides there a state superintendent sentence uh, was one of the ones addressing and, and, um, and the list of industry partners there and uh, is that on a timer there Mark or can you Flip it through there. Oh, there it is. And um, in our scores in the background there, it shows our percentage of increase with the other uh, systems in, in Madison County. But we had about a 600% increase over what we started. Alabama was number one in the nation um, for seven years in a row in a SAP growth. A lot of that's due to uh, the success that we've had, and a lot of other systems in Alabama are, are modeling us. And uh, that's uh, uh, legitimate. Uh, General Dickinson I was also talking about the importance of STEM and we had one of our students Chase uh, Henderson uh, was recognized from Sparkman as having he's his comes from a military family and kind of moved around but he's had completed six AP courses and was a superintendent scholar that that I got to recognize there so um, he got recognized so it was a really cool event uh, that that something for you guys to be proud of and it's one of the things that as we get in here and talk about a lot of things, one of the things that kind of struck me is that, you know, we, maybe we need to spend a little more time, you know, talking about, you know, what's going on in our classrooms with you guys and sharing some of the cool things that, uh, that we're doing and people are noticing, um, not just in Alabama, but across the nation. So, so I just wanted to thank you guys for supporting that program and our teachers and administrators, uh, central office personnel and, and our students that, uh, that take those classes because they're, they're not easy. So, um, just wanted to recognize that all right so uh, first up with uh, a number of items to discuss here in the work session and you guys feel free to jump in and ask questions will be uh, uh, dr. Minsky discussing our SRO agreements this is one of our yearly things that come up and so dr. Minsky yes, um, this is basically the SRO agreements were rewritten this year with the changes being the dates um, one additional change we have to our SRO and current agreements the MOU basically stated that it was a requirement for a central office employee to attend the national conference for the school resource officers. The problem has been the last two years since it's fallen in the week the teachers are back. So we've asked the sheriff to remove, if we could remove that, they were fine with that. So the agreements are the same that we have done the last several years with the exception that we changed, we updated the dates and that we took that piece of the, out of the MOU. Uh, I mean, right now we have nine school resource officers in our school, one at Buckhorn High School, two at Spartan High, one at Madison County <coughs> High School, one at Kings Green High, one at Meridianville Middle, one at Monrovia Middle, one at Spartan Middle, one at Buckhorn Middle School, and we are still waiting to hear back from the Sheriff's Department and Commission on the new open high school. Thank you. 
we'll share that so we'll be bringing that up next meeting for approval for you so you're in uh communication with the commission and the sheriff's department about new hope Um, next up is uh, I want to talk a little bit about our the, where we are with our communications kind of specialists and really get your feedback on this. Um, you know when when we came in, one of the when I began the superintendent, one of the things that kind of wanted to do is, is the top priority is to bring in kind of the business the community in to our schools as stakeholders. Uh, so that was kind of one of the big. Uh, one of the big responsibilities for this but then also expanding our social media footprint uh, we didn't have a lot of social media play and we're now one of the kind of recognized as kind of a model for the state on that by there's a, a an association of communication uh, specialists so we have a huge footprint with our Facebook and Twitter following and uh, it's a great way for our schools and our system to, to message um, but with that position opening now also the third branch of that is really pushing out through mainstream media also putting out stories um, that are positive and and responding to crisis management uh, for media request and to filter that so kind of with all of that put in uh, into one spot is is a lot to do so uh, I kind of had a survey or I did a survey and invited you guys to participate there I don't mind sharing that with you but just sort of a kind of a summary of that from what I got from administrators where the survey was of school principals and the board members and central office personnel is what what do we want out of this position what are your thoughts and, <coughs> and it just seems like we're not all kind of in the same place of what is kind of wanted or expected there's uh, principals seem that they want somebody connected with schools very familiar with schools maybe a, a teacher or administrator that can go into this role and uh, and be successful from the board's perspective is for almost somebody out of a uh, kind of a public affairs background that uh, that comes with the knowledge of the communications and media and can learn the school side um, there's such a a a lot of uh, different hats this person's going to have to wear up I, I had you know we have our current job description for the director of development and communications that have those kind of all those things listed that I previously mentioned <coughs> and then we ran through policy review the um, the communication specialist which we kind of tiered down to 187 position 187 day position but um, the sense again it's just we're just not we don't necessarily have this nailed down yet on what this would be so what I would call where I'm kind of at and I, and I really want to get each of your feedback here is even almost just kind of delaying making a decision right now on this and maybe look um, look looking at a firm that uh, other systems have done this looking for a firm to kind of help us with the media relations part to this and maybe handling some of the social media piece in-house with our current staff so it, it would really be you know if we can't really get in a good place on what what we want this to be or if we want it to be somebody from outside or somebody with an education background or administrative background is it would it be okay to kind of look at maybe outsourcing this temporarily maybe for a few months or till fall break and just kind of seeing how that goes and revisiting but i really want to get kind of get your feedback and thoughts on this. I'm, I'm i'm gonna i'll start off because I'm, i've talked with you matt about it i've talked with angie <clears throat> i mean this is my like nathan was with the director of uh IT, you know, your background in the public relations of public affairs is my background. And, um, you know, I, after reading this and talking with Mark, I thought about it and thought about it. I thought, you know, really what we're looking for is we're looking for somebody to tell our story. That is what this person's job is supposed to be. And a public affairs specialist does that. Public affairs is not about creating public opinion. Public affairs is about telling a story, but like public relations, they, all, they both are very similar, and they both have the knowledge about how to deal with the media and how to train people to deal with media and how to talk to the media. 
but a public affairs professional public very specialist is somebody that does only really to tell our story and, and that can be through the media can be through social media can be through written media can be through any kind of medium to get our story out there the good things that are going on within the Madison County school system and that's really what I think we're looking for and, and from what I see and from what I hear um, a public affairs professional can deal with the media and has that knowledge and background I think I was the one that said you know when I was a public affairs professional in the military I was trained to be a public affairs specialist but then uh, it was incumbent upon me to learn how to be a public affairs specialist to an armor brigade, an infantry brigade, an aviation brigade at division level or whatever the case may be. I had to learn that. So a public affairs professional can come in here and learn the stuff about schools um, and the educational stuff. Um, when you're dealing with the media, the media is very short and very quick. It's 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. And, you know, they're not they're, they're not interested in getting too deep they just want the, the who what where when why how and, but and be done and um, I don't think that that person really needs to have to have technical knowledge about our schools but can learn about how our schools work can learn how our system works um, and can go out and educate the teachers and educate the staff down at the at the schools on how to deal with the media how to how to, how to write things the right way and then, of course, that person also is heavily involved in developing websites, managing websites, doing social media, because that's part of telling our story. So I would argue that the title of this needs to be Public Affairs Specialist. And you put it out there with somebody with a background in it, with a degree in public relations, public affairs. If it, if, if it happens to be a teacher, and that teacher's got the background in that, and has worked in that, or he has experience in that, you know that's great uh, but if, if it's a an outside person who has the background and has worked in it believe me we've got a plethora of public affairs specialists in this community uh, between NASA the Army and all around we've got a, a bunch of people um, so I, I just throw it out there that we need to look at is it and a communications person is you know I think of a communications director of a communications specialist I think of a person that's going to manage a team this person is only going to be managing themselves if they're here at the district um, and so really that <coughs> if you're looking at somebody's gonna look at this in, a, in, a, in an ad or, or, or in a posting for a job they're gonna ooh, communication specialist just think well, I'm gonna have three or four people working for me and that's really not the case I mean, they're gonna be you know yeah they are gonna have three people me myself <laughs> and I that's all they're gonna have and and I think that's really what we need to be in but a p public affairs professional can do that all on their own they, they know how to go out and train people they know how they know how to go out and, 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 and work with people down to lower level and so I think we maybe need want to consider rewriting this and making it more of a public affairs specialist and less of a communications director or communications specialist. That's my two cents. Yeah. Um. I don't disagree with Dave. Um, I think most everybody knows that I come from a nursing background, and so a lot of times I will revert to that. <coughs> and I think nursing is very close to teaching in that we serve a population of very vulnerable people. And a lot of times, as nurses and teachers, we become very emotionally attached to those people. And when we tell our story, it has a lot of passion and it has a lot of courage in it. And that is wonderful for essay writing and novels and great camp lip soup. What is it? Chicken soup for nurses? It's great for that. But for public affairs, we need somebody who can quickly and concisely and spontaneously tell our story without getting so deep into the weeds of the emotion that we create something that is unable for the public to recognize. Because when I tell you about my patients, it gets kind of muddy because I want to tell you about their wife and what the <coughs> disease process is and everything else. But when a public affairs person at the hospital tells you what we're doing at the hospital, it comes out very clean and the public can understand what we're doing well. Whereas as a teacher or a nurse, I don't do that as well. That is not my skill set. And I think when you start looking at someone who can go in and look at all the schools and see what we're doing well. I think in hiring a teacher, you <coughs> might find out that you find somebody who knows really well what we're doing at the elementary schools or really well what we're doing in high schools, 
but they may not be able to have the capacity as a teacher to understand how to overlay a bigger picture so that the public can understand what <coughs> our system is doing, not just what they do every day. I don't negate that teachers are wonderful at telling a story and they're wonderful at what they do, but I don't know that they're wonderful at making sure the public perception of what we do every day is positive. And a public affairs professional is trained to, 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 to be able to do that. Um, you know, one of the, I, I've talked with all the principals in my, in my, in my district, and one of the complaints is, well, they don't, they don't get us on the news enough. That's because it might not be news. It's, it's news to us, you know, that, that award ceremony or that softball game or whatever it is that's going on at the school. For us, it's news because that's something that we're, we're we have an, an, a, you know, we're big on. But for the news, they may come out and videotape it. They may say, yep, look for us on the 5 o'clock news. And then something bang happens out there, either locally or nationally. And guess what? That soft story about you know the Sparkman High School band not only get pushed down to the bottom of the of the 30 minute newscast but it gets completely taken off yeah. it's not because it's not important it's news worth <coughs> but in the media cycle it's not that important they might get it in right. two three days later well and now there's but so many that's why it doesn't show up there's a 4 30 a 5 a 5 30 a 6 a 6 30 a 9 a 10 you know, I was on the news week before last. I was on there three times in one week, and I didn't have a single person that said, "Hey, I saw you." So I didn't see it. It, you didn't see me. No. You missed me. It, so, it's just, it's hard to understand, and that's something that can be articulated through a person that deals with the media, speaking of the media, de that deals with the media and deals with the, the folks <laughs> right out there. Right um, You know, they understand that it's 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 newsworthy at the moment, but if something else comes up, it's going to get chopped down because they only have. So they have 30 minutes to do so much and to get so much in. And, and I've talked with the principals, and most of them are like, when you explain it to them in that term, they go, oh, that makes sense. But I still want my stuff on there. Well, yeah, I get it, but well, it might not happen. The other thing that's difficult, and, and I hate to bring it up, is not everything that happens at school is positive. Nope. And it's those negative things that we quickly have to be able to write a response to our stakeholders without creating a firestorm that was not the appropriate response and that is from the principles that I work with often that's what I get is I I know I need to tell them what happened but I don't know how to do that without making it seem bigger than it is or smaller than it is and not that we ever want to try to spin anything but we want to make sure that what we're telling is not creating the wrong impression and we have as a system gotten in some tight spots because of the way a principal may have spoken to the media that was not appropriate because their training is not in handling those situations. And I think that it it is a benefit to us and our administrators to have somebody that we can quickly go to and say, this just happened and we need to make sure that the message we send out creates the what we want people to hear and then the administrator is free to deal with what is going on and that person can deal with the story <coughs> that is told yeah. especially when it's negative yeah I wrote a lot of you know a part <coughs> of being a public affairs professional is to write you know um, critical incident plans and um, crisis management and you can you can write and a binder full of stuff and then hand it off to a principal and they can go oh wait a minute this this is something and oh yeah okay for this incident this is kind of how I need to phrase how I'm going to deal with it and and that's again it goes back to a public affairs profession but if you are proposing that we consider um, contracting with a public affairs person for a few months, that would give us an opportunity to see how this works and to see if that's the type of person we need to hire permanently or if uh, we need to consider some other uh, way to, to do this. Right. We yeah. all know it's important. We need a good person. Because that that's kind of not what we have here in this right. description. Right. It's not really. Exactly. No, it's not. Not even close. Yeah. So, <coughs> the, um, and I don't think necessarily our administrators teachers understand kind of that perspective so if, if there can kind of be some transition time and we can kind of talk about 
uh, kind of what you guys want out of this and kind of what they want then see if we can get to a good place I, um, that way if it's if it is kind of a if we look for somebody that can we can contract with on that we're, we're kind of we can do that for a few months and see how that works and go from there so and there are other systems that do that there are other systems yeah. do that so. so is it okay if i kind of start exploring then and and uh and then bring the contract back to you guys and maybe can find a, a firm or public affairs specialist to kind of help us with this on the short term I think it's the right thing with to do. The, yeah. okay. All right. Um, the next up, every year we have to approve <coughs> our salary schedule. Uh, it has to come up for a for a vote. So we uh, we there's some tweaks and in, in terms here that, that are slight, but uh, you guys already approved the supplement coaches supplement schedule for next year. So that part's taken care of. Um, <coughs> but you have to approve the whole schedule as part of that so ken do you want to talk a little bit about some of the you, um i sent you an email that outlined the page you know the page didn't change do you want me to look for each of those changes or do you want to um is there any questions in reference to this there's eight is that correct eight changes correct now on some yeah. of those there might be two on a page for instance like on uh um, you you just just want to okay. <laughs> that way because that way everyone else sure knows what all right so on page three, um, on the assistant principals, um, where we had the after school duties and activities, it was titled an incentive. It's actually a supplement for after school. <coughs> so we're changing the word from incentive to supplement, so that's clerical. As well as the way it reads for the four years maximum experience in Madison County Schools as an AP, we reworded that so that's a little bit more clear. So those are pretty much just clerical. That was on page three. <coughs> On page seven, Mr. Massey has asked that the title is for uh, Secretary to Superintendent and Chief of Staff, Secretary to Director, and Secretary to Coordinator, Supervisor, be changed from the word Secretary to Administrative Assistant. Um, also, our Career Technical Education Career Coach position that is on this page, um, we found out that it, it was originally said as it's a base salary. We have found out that the state is actually looking at each individual school district and I identifying years of service and setting the allocation for that annually we were given uh, mr. Taylor from the state has sent Ms. O'Bannon the amount for 1718 and it's a different salary so we have placed in there the correct amount now so every year it's an annual salary set by the ALSCE so we will update that page every year with whatever it is it's not steps because it's not necessarily a schedule that's going to remain constant it could change as if we change that person out so it's not that's basically a salary but the state tells us what we'll pay for that position and that person kind of works at their discretion right <coughs> they're totally the funded from the alabama yes, state uh, department it's, it's based on the teacher's salary matrix okay however some systems have had a coach longer than me this is our second year mm -hmm. and so we weren't aware that they were recalculating until we inquired about it. So it's uh, it's different based on the number of coaches you have. Most have one, but some actually have two in some districts and on their years of service. So Ethan Taylor will let us know from year to year. And they will <coughs> tenure in some position. Pardon me, ma'am. They, they will they tenure, tenure in some position. Yes, it's a support position, so they would tenure in that position. Um, the person that we currently have is actually um, a former educator so mm -hmm. but this is a, actually a support position and it actually is a it's the teacher's salary <laughs> matrix but it's a 10 month it, it, there's some tweaks to it so the state actually will set it every year and it's not required to be certified correct teacher. Okay. okay on page eight oh, it cool. is yeah I'm sorry. Uh, okay, go ahead. Okay, on page eight are some of the changes that Mr. Wilson's requested based on redesigning the computer services. Like we currently have two network specialist positions and he wants to realign those better to the way the job duties are. So one would actually be the network specialist as is and the other one would be changed to a system specialist. Same positions, it's just more clearly defined roles for those two people so that as as they align computer services 
or information and technology <coughs> department. Yeah. Um, it would be a lot more clear as to how it's. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan, <laughs> Nathan, <laughs> Nathan woke up. <laughs> right, let's get that right. He was giving me that evil look. I was like, okay, it's not computer service. Can we make that? IT. We sure can. If that's okay, we will change that. Okay information and technology yeah. services is that <laughs> yeah <laughs> that sounds good okay we'll take care of that for you sir is there a new is there a new job description for the system specialist or will there be new duties for that i, mean, I know uh, it that's mr wilson is it's, okay. <laughs> okay okay and then the other thing is one of the things that he was talking about was trying to have some nine month positions computer tests that would actually be assigned to <coughs> a specific number of students or number of schools that would serve that populace only and so those wouldn't be 12 month positions they're still the same as computer tech twos but instead of hiring 12 month positions they'd be nine month positions and he's got an outline for those as well so it's actually the same salary <coughs> schedule it's just broken down to a nine month versus a, a 12 month um, salary so that's the changes on the computer services page, page eight. Um, the next page is page 11. Can you talk about the 187 day <coughs> computer tech too? Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you just did. Hello. <laughs> just missed. Go on, sir? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I just want to make sure I'm up to date with the All right, so <laughs> the next page is page 11. And um, what we had is we had six hour and two six-hour writing degree aids, which are basically the same as the computer aids at the elementary schools. And our instructional day is a seven-hour day, and our principals have talked to us about that. That's a problem. I mean, we got to create a schedule for people for six hours when they're actually their students there for a longer period of time. So this is what this is is an attempt to go ahead and move those six-hour positions to seven-hour positions so that all of our instructional aides, all aides working with instructional during the day, would all be on a seven hour band so that they're during the time the students are there. So that is a, a change that we're looking at. <coughs> so it's not seven or eight hour positions, they would all be going from six to seven. And so the, what this does, it, it basically, the seven hours are already on there and they're 180, um, 182 and 187 positions. So we just removed the six hour band off the salary schedule. So we're just removing that there and then those people will be moved to seven hour position. So what type of clerical people that are not instructional does this include? There is no six hour clerical. All of our clerical right now are all seven. The six hour we're actually at. Okay. Yeah, this is not for fixing <coughs> clerical to add hours. This is just the PEAs and the two writing to read. This is not fixing those poor people in those schools that do everything and are not compensated for it, right? They're already seven hours. Uh, seven hours, yes. Seven right. hours, but they're doing everything. You uh, know, beginning of school, they're up to here. Some of them, the local school covers an eight hours. Correct. Yes, that's true. Some of the schools do pay additional hours for the clerical aid, but not on the PE. And again, this okay. is during, this is the time when the whole point of this was just to fix so all of our instructional aids are all there during the time the students And I'm great there. with that. Okay. Can I go on? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a cleric, this is just a clerical. Um, under the old salary schedule, we had the interpreter for hearing and impaired, which is the licensed position, below the assistant for hearing impaired, and all we did is switch those two around because the licensed position requires a license, so it's a higher status, so we just moved it. So that's strictly clerical on page 14. Okay, on page 17, um, Mr. Evans has asked to have the Career Technical Center tech runs wage set at a flat $40 per day, which will provide our drivers a greater opportunity to do activity runs if they so desire. And also to change the activity run from the 970 an hour to a flat $10 an hour. So it's basically an increase, you know, for our bus drivers on, um, 
the career technical runs and also on the uh, activity trip payment. So instead of 970, it's to a flat 40 and from 970 to a flat $10 per hour. <coughs> Before the flat 40, what was it? It was 970 times three and a half or four. Okay, so it wasn't a flat. There it was, was okay, flat. okay. What's a local activity trip, not overnight? Is that, I'm assuming that, correct, but I mean, what's the, yeah, thank you. What's the, like, the areas, the radius of that? Local we define within 100 miles, you know, without, without an overnight, you know. Otherwise, and I think the board had given approval several years ago that at one point we were, if you were more than 100 miles, you had to have board approval. The board received that permission from the superintendent and the staff to approve those. So, you know. So if it goes over 100 miles and it's considered an overnight trip, no. even if yeah. it's even if it's completed in a day. Overnight is if you are I mean, physically actually, overnight. You're physically spending yeah. the night. Okay. And this will give our bus drivers from that operate the tech school, you know, they were full as far as their 40-hour week, so they couldn't run any activities because of making the daily trip and making an hour over and an hour back then they can work 10 more hours for the school if they choose to do so and make another $100 a week. It, it really is a benefit to our drivers, but it's also a benefit to our schools who are scrambling to find enough hours to run activities. And every school has uh, a person who is a career tech driver, right? Yes, and the, the main change was at one time it was all based on well, Swartman's the furthest and New Hope's the furthest, so they get four hours and everybody else gets three and a half, which made sense. Except now, Mr. Roman keeps the Buckhorn students later, and they continue with stuff. He keeps the Madison County High students later, and they continue with practical stuff. And the same thing with Hazel Green. So now everybody is running that four hours, but we have a salary schedule that says you're, you're, you're not. So this fixes that. It gives the bus drivers a little increase gives a little more flexibility for drivers and schools. Have they had any input into this? They yes, I've talked to all the, uh, all the tech drivers, you know, and then we didn't talk to them about activity because I didn't think that they were getting the 30 cent an hour raise that would right. complain. Okay. <clears throat> and the preschool activity still remain at 970? Is that, is that? Well, everything, everything will go to 10. Okay. All activities will so we need to modify this. Oh, I see it down there. So at the very bottom. Just an okay, okay. Yeah, that'll go to 10 too. We'll fix that. Down oh, bottom. you. Good eye. Preschool Whoa. activity trips. There's a line. Hey, and he is the way. <laughs> so <laughs> this is information still, and technology. Still, it's, still it's early. It's as it is, give them a few, few cents lower. When people start calculating the thousands and thousands of trips that we need to perform every year. Do we need that preschool activity trip line in there? I would just take that activity trip with activity. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> okay. So just delete that completely. <laughs> All right, we'll delete that <laughs> entire line then. All right. You may go on, Ken. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> All right, number seven, pages 18 through 20. This is the supplement schedule that you guys have already approved. It's just formatted to fit inside the book, so it will be published now, okay? Which goes into effect for July 1 as well. So that's the, the way it would look. And we tried to clean it up to make it look as clean as possible so it can be utilized, okay? That's what that one is. And then the final one it also deals well, yeah, yeah. Like, I didn't even notice this until I just saw it. We got under supplements, just saw, it says band director 9 to 12, and then it says band director ninth grade school. What's the difference? Your school district, your particular district has a ninth, ninth grade and school. Well, everyone else's is a ninth to twelve. I don't um, as far as what challenge is that? What you said? Let's see. Band director ninth twelve, band director ninth grade school. Okay, the band director ninth twelve will be your senior. Your one at Spartan High. Your band director at ninth grade school is specifically for Spartan High. Okay. That's fine. Oh, you throw me curveball, Mr. Webb. Okay. 
Just asking. Yeah. All right, I got one more page. She, she said we're challenged out there, right. so. That's right. <laughs> All right, the last one also deals with bus drivers. It's not the bus drivers, it's the minibus aids. You know, we do have a hard time finding uh, subs for our minibus routes or minibus aids. So we do adult bus driver as a substitute for a daily rate of $50. We're asking that we consider a minibus aid instead of doing it at seven and a quarter, if we can do that at a flat $40 for a daily rate instead. So it's basically following that same $10 an hour because it's roughly a four hour a day because you're asking someone to come in and ride a bus for a couple hours in the morning for roughly $15 and then again, come back in the afternoon and ride a bus and, and help our special ed kids for another $15. So this at least is a forty dollars for a, a day service. For this one. So that's what that other is. That is the final one. So changing that from seven twenty-five an hour to a flat forty dollars for the day. It was seven fifty. For seven fifty, right? I'm gonna throw another one because I talked with Mark earlier about it, and and nothing we can change today. I'm not asking it to be changed now, but it's something we might want to consider moving forward in the future. But a lot of complaints I get from teachers, particularly at the elementary level, is with regards to substitutes. What will happen is we pay our substitute teachers obviously less than the other two systems. And they say that one of the challenges they have is they'll get a substitute that says, yep, I'm coming into school today. And then all of a sudden they get a call from another system within our county that pays more. And oop, up and they go, they leave. And, and now all of a sudden you've got an elementary school teacher that's going to be trying to do <coughs> split with a third grade class or a second grade class or whatever so my question would be have we how long has our has our teachers substitute teacher salary been at the level it is and 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 have we ever considered raising it slightly to be a little bit more competitive and to stop that bleed over to the other two systems locally it was i can't tell you the exact year but within the last three years last year it's been raised it from Really? Right. Okay. This, so that yeah, that was been a big. Uh, my teacher committee has kind of tackled this, uh, just trying to help with this. We've actually done some analytics on fill rates, and uh, they kind of we kind of had two or three prongs to attack. One we did raise it to sixty dollars a day. It was I think I think this is the first year. Was it? Is the second year we've done it? I think this is, I think this is the first full year that we've done. It's not it. the first full year. Uh, in the within our budget and, and it's usually yeah, seasonal that when we have tough times it's right at Christmas time and it's in May mm -hmm. um, so what we did this January and it's some of the enrollment times too because of ACA uh, the Affordable Care Act we just we only have a it's not open all the time you, know, you can't just walk in and say I want to be a sub today there's certain times that personnel department just can't continue to steady stream so we have certain dates so this January, we actually made a really big push uh, to try to get our schools to encourage their PTOs and local communities to, hey, we need you, come be a sub if you can. And uh, we had some schools that really uh, chose to push that. Uh, the administrators pushed it. <coughs> uh, and, and we saw an increase. We had, how many new folks did we have come in in January? Ken, do you remember offhand? But it, it seemed to be around 50 or so <coughs> people came in in January because of that push. And we were, I was looking at some of the analytics of our schools that still had trouble with fill rates, and I went and checked. And I kind of asked them of their success on kind of the media push. And we put it on Facebook and promoted the post and all that. And some of those schools really didn't make that push. And so we're going to kind of make that a priority coming into next year of, hey, if it's, <coughs> and, and put kind of put a little bit on teachers, too, of, hey, if you – up to the school if, if we we need you your help to help increase our arsenal of, uh, of substitutes ready to go from our churches to our stay-at-home moms or dads or grandparents those are the folks that are connected to our communities that we want kind of in there so we're, we're still it seems that if we raised it to $80 you know raising the sub pay didn't seem to directly help no sub says well you raise it ten more dollars I'll be more likely to come uh, but it's really having that connection to the school so we're trying to kind of tap into that community connection and some of our schools are have done a better job of that than others so we um, and those that live in Madison County prefer Madison County no matter that ten dollars difference I 
think have to see you pay seventy. They have two different tiers. Yeah. So they're lower tier schools that don't necessarily have a problem are the same as ours. They have a um, another tier of schools where they have trouble filling and they do make a hundred dollars a day there, but they still have trouble filling those spots even yeah. at a hundred dollars a day. So And I'm sure it's probably more endemic in my area in Sherry's area only because we're so much closer to right. Madison City right. uh, you know possibly even Huntsville City too as location too I mean they can ease they can go they can go either way you know real real quick <coughs> and, and I understand there's other I know just the budgetary challenges I got yeah. it <laughs> but I under and I understand there's some other challenges that go along with that as well but the very reason we increased it uh, be able to afford it or not is to be more Yeah, and so we, we think now we need to, I, we think it, that we can make a bigger impact if we, like the push that we did at Christmas time of, hey, encourage, come be a sub, that kind of thing. Uh, we can even do a, we can kind of do a harder push early in the, uh, when school gets back. Yeah, gather from within the cluster or gather from within yeah. that school. And it's like, get your local churches, you know, put it in the bulletin, that kind of thing. Uh, and and really to, to get folks in that are connected with our community, not necessarily somebody that's not. And so the people that generally are our consistent sur subs are our community members. So we're kind of tapping. We have tap it in in the summer, and then we have it in January. This has nothing to do with salary schedule, but one of the things, I know you don't want me going off topic, but <laughs> one of the things that I heard at the strategic plan planning meetings when I was brave enough to stay in the room <laughs> was that, you know, that our subs, um, that sometimes when we have subs coming in that it is um, not a great day academically for our students. Now whether that falls back with teachers or with the sub themselves, you know, that was very concerning to me. Um, so I just think it would be helpful um, you know, to have some really in-depth training with the subs that we have and I think that would let them know that we value them and that their job is an important one because a wasted day is a wasted day. And I think that has a lot to go back on the teacher and um, school administration too to emphasize when it's it's a learning day. <coughs> now, I would honestly like to see um, a default set of lesson plans in everybody's Absolutely. campus course where if it's a, whether it be a weather day or right. if it's a day you're just not there and somebody got sick that morning there is a there's something there that brings value right. to that so work on that and ken you did do an excellent job you sent us all of this what exactly about everything i know everybody sitting here thinks it's the first time we saw this but it is not and you did a good job explaining it but thanks for doing it again i just had a hard time keeping up all the changes he kept sending out all the time <laughs> all right any other questions we'll bring this up for approval um on the 12th are you okay with that angie and it's, it's been sent to policy <clears throat> All right, um, Mr. Evans is going to discuss a, a GPS system uh, for safety and security <coughs> and kind of our, you know, right now our bus drivers don't do the chronos, so this is kind of our, uh, we've been working on a plan for that and uh, for a while now, so uh, Mr. Evans will be presenting. Well, right now, the court, our supervisor of transportation do this. We're going to give them a challenge and get us into the in, into the future of technology and transportation. And, and we all have been entrusted with technology now, that's a bad thing. But he has worked with two different companies, Sonovia and Zonar. He's traveled you know, a little over a thousand miles going and looking at products. But the thing is, you know, with, with your slide, you know, transportation challenges for the future, what we know is money. If it was easy, Everyone would do it and do it the right way, but it's not. It's a difficult thing, and he's done a phenomenal job. Safety and security is our goal. <coughs> the bus, I, I, I have to recognize it, it, clip art, whatever, says first student. The bus should say student first. 
because that's what we do is our students are first they have to be bus driving school everything has to be for the benefit of the student and nothing else but we have challenges you know how do we currently assist our drivers with routes we had an example this year driver got confused got lost we couldn't find them they couldn't tell us exactly where they were you know and finally we worked all of it and through through deputy smith that you know they helped but bus drive, buses have evolved from when i started they had the horse pool but then buses had no radios then we went to buses who had analog radios we went to buses with digital radios and we're we're in our area first in all these things and then we went to digital radios with gps but when you're up in up in sharps cove somewhere it doesn't work quite as well and it was very expensive so we kind of kind of took care of that but uh now if we implement one of these systems if a driver is lost they don't have to give us a landmark oh i'm over by ford's chapel church or i'm i'm somewhere they can we can <coughs> they can call on the radio hey i don't know what to do okay look to your right you'll see ford's chapel church go down ford's chapel road a quarter of a mile turn right take the next left and you will be back on route every school will have that ability to do that mr mccord will have that ability you know how do we locate a bus during an emergency well we call on the radio well what if the storm has inter interfered with the radio communication you know real-time gps will allow us to know where the bus is if in that emergency it was a hostage situation the bus driver couldn't use the radio we would still know where they are we can have deputy smith and his his department we can give them the access to this where their dispatch can look it up and say bus 0809 is you know on hobbs island road it's a mile from <coughs> ditto landing or whatever so it gives us all of that information one of the other things <coughs> our drivers deserve to be able to support them with accurate data now at the bottom you you'll see bus was late today bus didn't stop bus was speeding bus missed a stop three times the bus is never on time we don't have a way to dispute that we know it's not true we know 99 percent of our buses are running the way they should drivers are doing a great job but a parent whose kid missed the bus doesn't doesn't necessarily believe that this would give us the ability to protect our drivers if you know with this speed limit on shields roads 45 miles an hour if a bus is going down there 50 mile an hour mr mccord is going to get an email or a text that says bus 0809 is speeding on shields road in front of mount carmel gym so it's real time though and it's real time based on what the speed limit is on that road you know you can set a speed limit 60 but if you're on a 25 mile an hour road you never know but if somebody says somebody came through henson hills this morning running 40 miles an hour mr cubic might have been him you know what time was that we can look at that bus we can see exactly where it is we can see how fast it was going we can protect our drivers that way the other thing is with the events that happen in like in chattanooga and around bus drivers off the route bus drivers driving erratically you know we also can see that so if that route if that driver and i think up there they talked about him being off the route several different times on different days we will have that information ahead of time after that first day to say hey something's not right here but you know real-time gps historical data is exactly what uh, what we need this next slide you know how do we handle parent calls well first thing we do is we always apologize even if we're not wrong because you have to just the way it is 
What impact does it have on our customer service and, and public relations? If you keep apologizing for being wrong when you're not wrong, people are going to figure out you're wrong all the time. I like the two little graphics there, and Kathy Allen from Karen O'Bannon's office did those for me. The bus on the right is the 2017 bus. You know, the bus on the left is the 2057 bus. No matter what we do, we need to know where both of them are because they have our kids on them. So whether it's the spaceship, the Jetson bus, or the, or the good old international bus, we need to know where those children are. Could we minimize calls and keep parents informed? Absolutely. If the principal has a bus broke down at Madison Crossroads and can say, it's broken down on Op Reynolds Road and we've got bus such and such and it's a mile away. You know, we can get that information out over our list, sir. This thing will do almost anything you can afford to do. You can have it, you can have parents look it up, you can have a parent portal, you can scan the kid's name in, but that's not what we need. That's all great, but it's very, very expensive. I think Madison City did it a couple years ago. You paid $25 a month. And, you know, what we need is to, that we know where our kids are. We can convey that information to the parent. We don't necessarily want everybody in the world to know where that bus is. We want Officer Smith, and we want our folks to know where it is, and then we'll convey to the people we need to. How do we manage our payroll? We got paper, bus drivers and bus aides have paper timesheets. They're the only group of employee that we have that has not been able to integrate into Kronos. <coughs> this is an opportunity to integrate into Kronos. Be the only school system in the state that is doing <coughs> Kronos and bus. So we're going to minimize our payroll cost, number one, because it takes a long time to do 250 timesheets every month in every school. And our up to a minute accurate timesheets are whatever's written down. We don't know. We don't have a clue. What if we could electronically and accurately process all payroll data? How much it would protect the person who is putting stuff on it, doing a paper time sheet, you know, because you get the GPS data, you know where they are. <coughs> you know, so, you know, if they worked over, it's right there. Pretty hard to work over without your bus. But this would allow them to log in on their bus. If on this sheet, collecting data, no guesswork. Driver log in and out, location, time, and accuracy assured. Up in the top right hand corner, how you would log in. That's a box is a little bigger than that, Eddie, but not much. The employee puts in their employee ID number. It recognizes it. It says, oh, Eddie McCord's getting on bus 4752 at, you know, 9 o'clock in, in the morning. And where is he going? He's going on an activity trip, so he would punch in a 3. And they would know that bus is going on an activity trip. If it's a morning route, they would punch in a 1. When they got done their route that day, that morning, they would punch in to do the same thing, put in their employee ID number and their 2 as an end of a route. There'll be no more from parents, from employees, from us. No more he said, she said. This is an actual verifiable, I worked this long, my bus was there at this time, it did what I was supposed to do. It takes care of all that. It's one of the only products we've found to integrate with Kronos. It's a simple import, export, you can download a Excel spreadsheet, it goes into Kronos, both Kronos and these, these companies have worked together to get this done. So we're going to have verifiable data. Time and attendance, this basically just shows you what the actual work was, the plan work. You know, it gives you daily totals by the day. Employee time versus GPS. And this, this is a 
If you see over on the left side, the punch in was at 540. If you look on the right side, the ignition was on at 538. They had to turn the key on, reach up, put their stuff in, log in. There's a two minute lead. You know, and where was the bus? It was at Scott Bus Shop or whatever, whatever that stands for. Okay, they turned the ignition off again at 539 to do what? Go do their pre-trip. So it allows them that time. They're, they're logged into work now. They're going to do their pre-trip. They walk around, do all the things that they're supposed to do. The ignition comes back on at 539. Well, it comes on at 539. At 550, they left the bus lot. So, you know, it's, oh, they're driving off. So we know when they left. And then they log out, does the same thing, go back to the afternoon, log in again, do your thing, log out, go home. But we know where the bus is. Several years ago, we had a bus that was borrowed and it ended up in Scottsboro. Well, we found it because the place that the Scottsboro police had it impounded and towed for $175. But we didn't know the bus was missing because it was a Saturday Sunday. But you know, otherwise it could have been anywhere. Now, <clears throat> Eddie will draw a geo fence around where the buses are and you will get an alert if the bus leaves the containment area. So, you know, joy ride or hey, I, f I forgot to tell you we were going to Birmingham leaving at 3 a.m. You know, he'll have that information and the principal. <clears throat> Mr. Evans. Yes, uh, sir. Can you, can you geofence the, the routes themselves, the, 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 the route to? I'll defer to my. It is, it is capable of doing that. Okay. It, this system here, <coughs> we have a software system, old software that we use for routing now, you know. <coughs> But this system here is compatible with the newer system out to where they lay on top of each other, where the route and the bus, the actual <coughs> route bus to take it, can make together there. Like they lay up each other. Yeah, that was my second question. So that you still need this, the, the other route management software that they, they work together? They could work they together? Could, they, they could. Okay. Okay. The next is the time card reporting. You'll see all the punch in times, the punch outs, whether it was an AM, PM bus route, number of hours worked, you know, basically on the rounding rules for Kronos, just like all employees, it does that for you automatically and rounds them either up or down depending on what the what the thing says. But you know, this this scenario said that, you know, during that time period they worked twenty point seven three hours. But it's verifiable to go back and say, okay, what did you do during that 20.73 hours? Well, I was on my bus route. So I think that's a, finally, and I, I know I'm quickly running out of time here, Dr. Minsky, but I'll, I'll defer some to Mr. Wilkerson's time. How can we, you know, how can we afford it? How can you afford, how can you not afford it? How can we afford to add technology with limited budgets? What impact does technology have on our daily operations? I tell you, we spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars idling buses for 30 and 45 minutes and 60 minutes at a time. That's a very, very expensive, you know, I drive a bus to the football game in Buckhorn in August and it's hot. I'm not sitting out there. I'm sitting on my bus for three hours and I'm gonna let that baby run and run that fresh Madison County air conditioning to take care of it. Well, first thing is against the rules. Our rules, state rules says anytime you're on a school campus, you should not idle more than five minutes for the environment and the kids around and all that. So what we would like to have you consider is that we adopt this technology for our transportation program. I will assure you that it will fit within the budget that we have for transportation now. It's not going to be extra dollars. We're going to save enough in fuel 
basically probably to cover most of it. But we don't want any general fund money coming into transportation. We want to be self-sufficient even at the 80% rate. <coughs> but I think this gives our opportunity for our drivers to come into the same technology that every other employee has. Our bus aides will be able to log in on that same box at the bus driver so that their time is the same. And everybody will be on Kronos and electronic payroll. Our plan would be to, if approved, we'd run it from August through December with paper time sheets and, uh, and, and Kronos, and then we would transfer over to full GPS capability. Mr. Travis, can the bus driver see the reports like their, their clock in time, the idle time? Can they see all that, or do they just see the, the punch in and punch out part I of it? I think that, you know, I can print it off to the part in on the bus, and I'll see it. I'll see it. I'll see it. Okay. One of the, one of the, re there's two different scenarios. One is the little keypad, and the other one is a full fudged tablet. Buying 275 or 250 tablets and having them sit on buses that sit out in schools, not many people are going to steal the keypad. It doesn't work for anything else. But if it looks like a tablet, yes. Yes, ma'am. Speaking of that keypad, so I take it from what you just said that we actually purchased that keypad? They come with the service. And if one of those keypads is no longer functional, does the service replace that or do we have to buy they, another one? They have a, war a warranty that they, they, they service the equipment and provide the equipment. And what they would do is allow us to have five or ten on a shelf. Okay. So when we have an issue, it wouldn't be, oh, I couldn't log in today or three weeks later. Because I have a seven-year-old that rides the bus, and I can assure you he can knock that thing off. In a well, day. he'd have to be sitting in the driver's <coughs> lap, though. Hey, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I have you met perfect. Andrew? It could happen. But, you know, things happen. <coughs> well, so exactly. Know you know, and time to time come up missing. The keypad is not very expensive because it's just a little electronic device, no memory, no... It but goes, they do have a warranty. It goes into the bus situation on its own. Will so, there be a policy if... A, for instance, say this keypad for some reason didn't work one morning when a, a driver got on the bus and they weren't able to input their information. Will we have some sort of backup policy or a, go ahead, you look like you have that answer. Manual. I discussed the driver's real thing about policy. And they can go to another bus. 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 But the GPS is on the actual bus. Yes. Yeah, so it has it to do still, with the the GPS would track where the bus is. The keypad just notifies <coughs> Chromos that that person has initiated. Okay. Right. And it notifies the software or the, the pro program we have. <coughs> and then after somebody in the transportation department verifies all of it is correct, then it's downloaded into Chronos. So we don't want to put yeah. information right. into Chronos that may be not correct. Right. It will require some specific procedures. Uh, I'll give you a perfect example. I, I got on the bus and I was running late and I forgot to punch in. Well, Eddie will be able to look and say, okay, we've got a missed punch here. The key came on at 6 a.m. We know that's where their time would have started. And he can do a miss punch <coughs> at 6 a.m. Or if you write your procedure, you know, that's the key has the key is your first move no matter what. You know, but we we know to allow ten minutes for the pre trip and then he'll be able to see that the bus left at six twelve or six thirteen. We have got to do have specific procedures and we've got to do a tremendous great job of monitoring it every day. It can't build for a week. Whatever we're going to do, some personnel in transportation is going to have to take on that, that job to make sure. You know, substance. Go ahead. You also said that it can connect to the fire and rescue. Will that be, autom for instance, like, you know, in your car, OnStar automatically said, it's not that 
the no the, it, it, the it bus driver would still have to contact somebody and say we need somebody but the <coughs> fire and rescue or whomever was responding to that would know exactly where that right was or from. you know we called dispatch you know or so, or a parent says something strange is going on with that bus going down the road and they call the sheriff's department sheriff's department will be able to log into that software and say I know where they are, Deputy Smith, we're, we're on Bridgeville Bottom Road, can you beat that bus over there? So if That's a child became bus. unresponsive on a bus, yes. the bus driver could notify and you could immediately... Yeah, the bus driver would hit the radio to, to base one just like was. we do now, and then we could get an exact location for the first responder. But it's, you know, it, it's like if a, you know, what we would... The other thing we're trying to do is take the load off of our local school bookkeeper. All that information that is now is being that? kept at the local schools will come to the transportation department through Mr. McCord. So they'll still be assigned to Spartan High School. That will be their place, but their timesheet will work through Mr. McCord. So that would take a lot of, you know. So at the school, they would request a sub through their administrator, just like they always do. The administrator or lead driver would notify any, hey, we had a sub on such and such day. He would punch it. Was it sick leave or was it personal leave? She said it was personal leave. He would punch that person in for personal leave. And then that would download to Kronos. And, and I know way over time, Dr. Minsky, but any more questions? What's the installation time for, to, to, to outfit the entire fleet? If we were to get this approved sometime in the month of June, it would be fully operational by the first day of school. <clears throat> what what's the co I know you said we don't need any additional dollars but what's the cost for this product I'll, I'll give you the question. initial cost I think what, I think that's can I, I don't think the company would want to well that. okay that, it's I, we are you still know. negotiating that process or do we have they they, no. they they made me promise I wouldn't call and ask for anything else <laughs> the, the last negotiation was from the CEO of the company does he have enough nerve to ask for another discount? And yes, it is, you know, and, and we can, at the point before we let that information out, but it is very, it's, we're, we're operating at 60% of the price that anybody else is getting it for because we're going to be a pilot system for the state of Alabama, one of the largest systems, one of the most buses, and it will be a great selling point for the company. And the, the one thing Dan mentioned, just wanted to kind of reinforce you guys. So we get transportation funded at 80% of what <coughs> it should be in the state knows that. But it's, there literally is no other system that I've talked to um, who actually operates their whole transportation program in what the state allot. So we don't, we're not dipping into our general fund to supplement what the state provides for transportation. Like other systems, not basically every other system has to do. So, I mean, it would still fit within that budget and that allocation. You know, we yes, still need a greater increase of that to be able to purchase new buses, but um, it would fit in there. Have they dealt with a system? I know you said we're one of the largest they've dealt with with the mileage covered. You know, uh, interesting. I doubt there's many systems they, that they, go as far they as do. The do. Charlotte Mecklenburg School District. That's where I went to high school. That has 1,500 buses. One of the other companies that had a place in Houston, Eddie went to see that. They had 500 and some buses. And across the state of Texas, they a lot of miles. But, and my, well, my, I guess my last plea is, if you don't consider it for any other idea except the safety and security, and on, <coughs> on sheet one, put student first instead of first student. Because... No amount of money that you save or anything is worth not having the best safety for our students. Quick, quick more, one more question. Yes, sir. Sorry, one more question. Dan, do you know if the system has the capability where the drivers themselves can look at how they're doing as far as if you guys set up the metrics as far as idle times? If you set all that up, could the driver themselves actually see how they're doing themselves? So they could check to kind of see. Do you know if it has that capability? I, I don't. I don't believe it. Well, I take it. No. It does if you purchase the tablet. 
But then oh, you're more okay. than doubling. Well, I, like a, so it's not like a login that could go in separate of like Kronos, which I know is for time for <coughs> this system that they could actually just kind of. The department could probably do a report for them. Yeah. You know. Every so often and every month. And, <coughs> and we certainly will. Okay. Because there's some efficiencies to be gained that we right. need to make sure we take care of. Okay. But our thing was to not have to have the drivers, you know, get off their bus, go into the school, sure. find a computer, do something with that, and then come back. You know, we wanted everything. When you got in that driver's seat, it's right there. It's taken care of. Now, if you have questions, hey, you know, Nathan said I was doing 60 miles an hour, and you know I wasn't. Eddie will look it up and say, you know, you know you're only doing 59. Everything was good. I mean, for instance, we've, we've had five on his bus he's trying to um, do all the I have a driver. Every, every Tuesday, I get, an email, I get a email, a report. So, please, I have uh, time and one more opportunity. But the speed is more, <clears throat> every week you come up with the same bus driver, same bus driver. You know. <coughs> So she was there talking one day. I I come to the car I want to show you something. She was running 45 in a 35 mile an hour zone. She had no clue that it was 35 for She so every day the same place. It bothered me. It caught her. She was thinking. She did not know that God brought it to her thing. And she she liked it for me. She got ready. She showed it to me. It's a learning it's a lot. Yeah. But Mr. Weiss, we were able to Track your, track your band to Cincinnati, Ohio. <laughs> saw where they were at. Saw where they stopped. Saw what they did. Where did they eat? Where did they pull off? You know, that's a good feeling to know Burger you've got somebody that's <laughs> watching over you when you're 500 miles away from home. Also, <laughs> yes, the weather is is you know, if bus driver has to pull over and shelter somewhere. You know, they may not have time to call us, but we can see where they are. Any more questions? About the, I know you're not going to divulge the price of this tonight, but I just want everybody to know that when, if, when and if we vote to do this, that that will be public. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. We are still, for lack of a better word, negotiating. You know, badgering the companies. Right. To be a <coughs> poster child. And, and we are at the point now where we know what it costs. You know, the only thing, again, without divulging that to anybody else, you know, it is going to be a, a great deal for us. Thank you, Dan. All right, thank you. All right. Um, yep. All right, I'm next up at Martin. Go ahead and hit up there that I ask. Uh, okay. Mr. Wilson, can come look at when he nope. uh, came on board. Is right now our we use School Messenger for our communication system with parents. Uh, when you get those calls from me, whether it's whether it's your calls from your principals about uh, pictures and picture day or all of that, that is a service <laughs> that uh, we pay for. So um, you know, I kind of looked around and, and, and came across this company, Agent Link, and uh, I asked Mr. Wilson to just kind of investigate that and see kind of what its capabilities were and cost and that kind of thing. So, uh, so Mr. Wilson's prepared a report for us. We had probably about three or four conversations with the company. We had a uh, dog and pony show with the system as well to see what it would do. They let us try the system. We plugged our numbers into it. We know that it'll work with our system, so that's not really an issue. But what we found is it has a few advantages over what we are school messenger. Uh, Jeremy and Jim Snell, they, uh, they headed the project. And one thing that we found that we thought was really unique is School Messenger will call 100,000 phone numbers in 20 minutes. Well, this thing will do in 11 minutes. So as far as safety, that could, that could mean a little bit of difference there. Also, it had something that we were really excited about. Right now, School Messenger relies on our SDI or Chalkable or PowerSchool exports. Well, this will also rely on that, and that's where we'll get the bulk of its data, but also as a parent portal. What's so great about that is the parent can go and, oh, y'all have got my wrong phone number. That parent can log in the system and, and do their own phone number, so we know that our data is accurate. And also, if somebody gets a call that they're not supposed to get a call, they can go in and change that as well. So that'll help us a lot to keep our data a little more accurate as well. And also, both systems have a phone app. 
Well, one advantage we found on the phone route with EduLink is it's got a directory. So any administrator, what they could do is they could be down the hall and John Smith could fall over. Well, they could look up on their phone, John Smith, and get the, his parents' phone number at that point and call the parents right there where John may be laying in the hall with an asthma attack or something. So that's a really good safety feature as well. And we can help notify to get to the parents quick if we need to. And probably the best thing about it is uh, we've, I've hammered out a deal with those. I guess I learned from Dan Evans on this. But we're going to be a show, show place for them. This company has not been in Alabama yet. They've been around since 1995. So they have vast experience. But we're going to be their first system in Alabama. And to get in the door, we got the price down to $14,000 a year. And they said they would guarantee that price for five years. We've got that in writing from the company. They're also going to come on our leadership day and provide training as well. And basically, we'll save uh, $20,000 <coughs> a year and $100,000 over the, over the five year if we go this route. For us, it looks like a win-win. We know it's going to work, and we think it'll actually be a little better. Any questions, comments? Hmm. Currently, what, currently, what has to happen, like if a parent gets or you want a grandparent or somebody else to have their number in, they've got to call the school. The school has to go through and do that. And so it's kind of always the thing of keeping that the most updated. So to, to, to make kind of the parent <coughs> portal where they can log in themselves to do that as a... Kids can't log in, say they're the parent, and change it to some <laughs> random number. <laughs> don't, forget, <laughs> don't forget who we're dealing with here. <coughs> Smoking like a true teacher. They, have to be a, they obviously have to have a kid in the district. All right be on the list right. that it pulls that's right you couldn't just sign up just right and you know our students right now have sign and parents have signing capabilities with yes. uh, I now power school there so we we make sure that's secure absolutely good I like I'll just it. say that because I, you know I had a friend for years that got a call about something <coughs> that they didn't know so somebody had something <laughs> wrong I mean, school yeah. message is pretty easy to use for you guys <coughs> this is very simple I would assume pretty much same process we, we and we actually had some issue with school messenger on what was technically an emergency <coughs> contact and what was a non-emergency contact so there was actually um, yeah I mean it, it, it was easy to use but there was a little bit of miscommunication there on who was getting the calls and, and so uh, we, we think this will be a, a little bit easier to make sure that everybody gets calls on one thing that he does too that I didn't point out, what he'll do, he's got a, a smart logic built into it. So if I'm a student and I miss four days unexcused, we can set parameters. At that time, he would place a call to the parent and say, hey, we wanted to know you to know that your son has four unexcused absences. You may need to address this. So that's a really great point yeah. too that's all automated. The student directory is only available to the administrator, so correct, because we don't need Students running around the studio, right? Messy. <laughs> Got your number. Okay. Hey, baby. <laughs> well, that is all for our work session that I have. Oh. oh. I ain't got that out. was record, got record pace. All right, well. You need a break or you need to go into special session? I'm good. Yep. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Let's do it. All right. Well, I'll recommend. Or do you want to do any <coughs> game? Just start us up. Just go. All right. I recommend approval of the agenda for June 1, 2017. Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion regarding the agenda? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. I recommend approval of the minutes for April 20th, May the 4th, May the 15th, and May the 18th, 2017. Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion concerning the multiple minutes? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. All right, so uh, I recommend approval for the 2017-18 Student Code of Conduct. Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion regarding the Code of Conduct? There's, I just noticed one place where we should have had a past tense that we didn't, and it, I made a note at home, but of course I did not bring it with me. It's under dress and um, 
early on where we're talking about um, dress and whatever we had have you got it the Michelle I can Hold find it quickly denial oh here it is uh, we'll make sure we fix that before it goes yeah out it, to um, there. like pants shorts dresses and skirts um, Okay, under like I think it's leggings, jeggings. And the pants must be covered by garments. For the weather, uh, as described above and determined. Do you see that? Yep. Okay. Sorry. <coughs> this is some serious proofreading there. Yeah. Some very serious proofreading. You and Nathan down there. Nathan and I take the tracks. code of conduct seriously. I'm telling you. Everywhere <laughs> I go, I think, oh, did that meet the, meet the dress code? I've always struggled with that. <laughs> Oh, your little piercing is good now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start wearing my earrings now. <laughs> All right. Is there any further grammatical <clears throat> corrections or discussion? I, well, I didn't want it going out that way. I, I am proud of you. We did have a couple things that wasn't yeah. presented. Um, Ms. Stable, if you don't, you don't point those out. we haven't hit just about any everything on this list I just said that opens up the door it's like other again yeah and and then we discussed that in the last one it was kind of we actually talked with uh, Ms. Thompson about that a little bit too it was kind of could something come up that we don't have on here if it's something unforeseeable we, we don't want everybody <coughs> kind of having access to that but well, that should be a huge, if you see a 329 or a 421, uh, that should be a huge red flag. Like, what? I yeah. need more information. Right. We don't. We, well, what that's going to cover is it's going to cover a school that reported a drug case and it ends up being something different that she discovers in her hearing. And so while she's, the, it's going to come up here to the hearing officer. And so during the hearing officer, she's going to realize, okay, it's not this charge, but it is this, and this I can't fit it in a category. So it's not where the school can choose to use other incidents, which is what you had before. Right. The school doesn't get to make that call, but once your discipline specialist, your you know pupil services coordinator looks at it, then she could make that call. So they can't select it? No. Does it say that? Yeah. Well, she would have to... I mean, if they filed it as a 329, she'd have to have the hearing and then come to that conclusion to find it. discipline under that category. So they can select it, but she... I guess she, the principal could, could suggest it, but they, they can't. It's not like the way you've used other instances in the past. It's not a, it's not a catch-all in that regard. And before, that was our most common code was right. the catch-all. That's <coughs> not good. So right. obviously that would be... It's what we don't something want. It's what we don't want anymore. The case where we <laughs> would, or we'd actually put it in the code. So it's kind of in case something just doesn't fit in any of those, it would just need to go to our service department before something. a school automatically puts that in. But no school can put that in, just the hearing uh, officer. The, the, correct? Yeah, that's correct. The, there are those codes for level one and two that the school can do that. There, that's two twenty two under class two and um, 113 well, I mean, under class one. But if it rises above that, it needs to have. So so if if you get a case that comes before you and it's a 329 or 421, what, what do you, what do you, and it, that's that's the default that the principal did. What do you, what is the? Well, what I can, what I can, I guess that they have to come in, that you can classify that. 
Okay. 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 The idea being gotcha. that there are things that happen in schools that no one anticipates might ever happen that might not be on these on this list. <coughs> well, as long as they have to reach out to Ms. Stovall, yeah. that 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 makes sense. Yes. Um, and so she would be again. the she would be the level right. that's determining the equality across the system versus different principals having different levels of um, severity of punishment for. So we just put in there or the intent to use, although <coughs> on the description, <coughs> the legal description, use is intent. We just okay. want to make that clear. Yeah, that's good. So what you really had was language in the policy that was conflicting with this proposal. So uh, I suggested that discipline matters not come before this board for a separate type of appeal. If it fits under the appeal in your appeal policy, then it would come to the board. But I don't think you want to hear every suspension appealed to this board to make a decision or uh, every paper that they have to write or something like that. At least that's the feedback I got. I thought at the time we dealt with it once before. Okay. If I remember correctly, we had a motion and a second, and that was the discussion. So if there's mm -hmm. no further discussion, all those in favor of approving the current code of conduct, not the current, I'm sorry, the new code of conduct, please say aye. 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 All right. Did they can vote? I did. I did. He's quiet. He's he the he subtle eyes. All right. <coughs> I recommend approval of the 2018-2019 uh, calendar. Lord, they haven't even started school. When does school start for 2017? Sir? Well, when does school? Motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Motion. Second. thought we did. Yeah, go ahead. I don't think we did. The well, motion is second. Is there any discussion concerning the calendar? I think it starts like July 15th. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> The current, well, 2017, 2017-2018. We'll be starting school in 2019 on the 31st of July. <laughs> so, you know, the priorities of the calendar being people like their week of fall break, um, Thanksgiving week break has, has worked out well. Um, I think the biggest difference between the 1819 calendar and our this year's and next year's calendar is the last two student days are Monday and Tuesday. Our graduation days are Tuesday and Wednesday. So that's kind of the biggest difference there. This, you know, this year the last student day was a Thursday. Next year will be the same. Uh, 
but the 18, 19, the last student days are that uh, Monday and Tuesday. Is there any further discussion? What did you guys decide about uh, Good Friday? I know it was a conversation about that. Um, or Yeah, we talked about, you know what? The suggestion that I received, <coughs> checked into that, talked with Jane to see what those she was seeing across the state was not to use that term. Right. And just call it a school holiday. Gotcha. Which they or was to do a weather was, day. And her recommendation well, was to do a weather day. But if you wanted it set, then she Good said Friday. you could just call it school holiday. Call it a school holiday. Ken, do you remember what day we had that marked on there? The, the Good Friday? Well, I mean, the Friday the, that we were going to do the, a school, the school holiday. holiday. The Friday before Easter. Is that? I don't, I don't remember. I think the 26th. Because um, we could do that by just putting it back an extra student day in May. We would, yeah, we would move the 22nd to the 23rd of the last teacher day, and then you'd have students on the last student day would be the 22nd if you wanted to add a weather day in there. Yeah. For 2018, good, good, well, student day, it'd be March the 30th. Friday, March the 30th. Friday, March 30th, mm -hmm. this good Friday. For 2018. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so we'd have fall, I'm sorry, spring break and then the next Friday. Yeah, but we're talking about 19. Oh, you're right. Oh. It is the 18, 19 calendar. <laughs> that is. I, I think that's the one I'm looking at. Year that we're going to be going into, or are we talking about the one that's up for that was I'm, I'm assuming the one we're talking about. Yeah, this is already April approved the other one. <laughs> April 19th, sorry. <laughs> April 19th, yeah. okay. And that would put a nice break in April. It would. Yeah, mm -hmm. it would. Ken, is it okay to make that change? On the fly here. <laughs> on the 27th, 28th, and the second time he's looked at it. We've already approved the 27th. Where? No, he's talking about 2018 and 2019. Where are you going to pull it from? It would be, what we would do is we would add the 19th could be a weather day, if that's what you want to call it, or a school holiday or whatever the termination you want to use. And then what we could do is put um, 21st, would, it would be moved to the 22nd, would be the last, that would be the last student day. And then the 23rd would be the last teacher day. What was your graduation? We're talking different years. Yeah. Priscilla, you said um, that. It's in April. April, not May. 19th, right. We're talking right. about the weather. The Good Friday is April 19th. Yes. You're talking about making that a weather day or a school holiday day. Then you would have Friday to add one good. to the, to the uh, end of the year. <laughs> You would have to find another day for the 240 people. But well, I hate to say this, but would work it. we actually, you know, have a little bit of time between now and 2019. Mm -hmm. If we, if you guys wanted to look at that, it's not something that's going to change a whole lot of people's life if we <coughs> received it towards the end of June. Am I correct? Make sure, because I, I thought you said that. Does it mess up anybody's it anything? If we but just it's, this is probably later than we approved one before, but I don't mind. Yeah. I mean, we'll we'll have the end of June to to give everybody a chance to let that settle. Or are you comfortable right now saying whack off the 19th and put it on the 20th? Well, I mean, what was the feedback we got that you got on it when you before? Look at, the, look at Christmas. Uh, you couldn't. Winter holiday. Well, I know what you're thinking. Um, <laughs> the, the, the last June day is the 19th. 29th. And the, you know, for the teachers and the students. Good Friday. Two forties are still working already that that Friday or that Thursday and Friday. So that's pushing that time. The only way that you can really add it is um, you could have the students come back on January the fourth for one day, which really doesn't make a lot of sense there. And the only other place you can really do is add it to the end of the year. I mean those are really your only two options. So it's pretty I mean if you want to, to add that weather day in April is going to it's pretty much got to be added to the end of the year is really what you're all you're doing is pushing everything back a day. Is that the week of testing? Does it impact any of that the nineteenth? Yeah. We we haven't set the exam schedules and things like that for that time for oh, I mean April. The, I meant the federal test. I agree with Angie. I think we need to wait. We don't even know what testing we have. 
Good. That's true. I hate to say it, but does, if we change it, does it have to go back through policy review for a day? No, the policy review has already had their comments on this. Okay. So this is up for, you know, so that's not something that would have to go back to policy review. They've made their comments. So you guys have already considered those. Those were given to you earlier. So this is something that the board the superintendent wants to recommend this change and the board's okay with it. That's fine. We'll just go ahead and put it out there. It does not go back to <coughs> making that change so do you all want to send your full year motion and allow you can ask me to carry it over and i will if you like but other than that i just if it was going to be it. a lengthy conversation i take back i take back i take it back well, if you ask to carry it over i'll just you don't have to are you taking back the motion or do you want to just you ask me to carry it over later? do you want well, to just, it? just carry it over to the 29th okay right, okay we'll do that well, is that table bad? The, table the calendar Pardon until. Is that bad? I mean, we're trying to be good. That works. That's perfectly fine. Bring back You want to bring it back on the 12th? You bring it back on the 12th. How many other? That's our. Um, you will be here. How many other things yeah. are we already have on the 12th? You're not going to be here. Uh, exactly. No, I'm kidding. The 12th will just be a regular. The 12th doesn't already have A through H. Because this was technically a personnel. We okay. okay. All right, so carry it over. The 2018-19 calendar is tabled to consider having a April 19th <coughs> school holiday in recognition of Not Good Friday and adding a day onto the end. All right. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> So for item C, I recommend approval of the agreement between Madison County Board of Education and A Plus College Ready for the services of science content director. Motion. Second. A motion and a second. Is there any discussion or question? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. I recommend approval of the all athletic pass as attached. Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Question? <coughs> I mean, just what is the feeling in the community about this? <coughs> um, <coughs> I think some of the well, it's going to be up to the administrator to make this available so it, it's not going to be uh, it won't automatically be available at all schools unless the school wants to do it okay so i think we're going to have some schools watch others try it out kind of see how it works um and mm -hmm. we have some schools that are very excited about what they think uh, additional revenue this will bring in and kind of being able to help all sports um, be able to get what things that they need you think in the end that it will make money or will lose money? I think you'll bring in revenue, uh, additional <coughs> revenue from it. That's what I anticipate. That's something we'll definitely watch. Uh, if you take, for instance, somebody that goes to every home football game, that's spending about three dollars on the home football games. Well, well this pass is a hundred dollars, but it's also a way for community members to support those programs if they can't make it to the game. So. Um, it's kind of like having season ticket holders that may not even go to the game. They're still giving that support there. So I see it as a way where community members can support their school um, through this, uh, even if they can't make it to all the games. And for those that like to go to a lot of activities, it will save them, those folks money too. So I think it will help our, our frequent flyers, so to speak, um, kind of ease their pocketbook a little bit. For, but for those that maybe can't make it to all the games it still allows them to support their school so i think you'll have a you could potentially see an increase in, in revenue but this is just a trial run right for the schools i know sparkman wants to do this i'm not sure if any other school is actually going to jump on it they may just see how it goes uh, at sparkman and what Secret will they swim. get a little badge 
they've got some they we can yeah. print them here if other schools want to do it Sparkman does have a badge printer and they kind of have a design mm -hmm. uh, template created that they would that they would use for that and it would just be for home games so it's not transferable to road games and that kind of thing so okay it would be nice if at the the end of the school year next year if the schools that do it would give us a little feedback yes, right. as exactly. to whether this went well and should we continue it or set something we should pull because it's really not working out yeah i assume they won't do it if it's not going to help mm -hmm. that yeah so you would assume but good intentions yeah i mean I, like for instance like hazel green i think mr wall may have expressed that there was literally one their first three home <coughs> games all had heavy rain yeah and and it was they had trouble really yeah. meeting some of their budget what uh, kind of fans have they got out there that'll have any rain gear well, there was some light carry your aluminum umbrella for there you go so it, covered, um, covered domes and <laughs> it, 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 new hope. It, well, does, it does provide that consistency there there just mm -hmm. tends to be indirect consequences to everything mm -hmm. and yeah. i would hate for something like that to go on longer than it should because we didn't follow up yeah so we'll, we'll definitely be so. keeping an eye on it i know karen will and uh in the school so it's all on you all right is there any further question or discussion regarding the <coughs> all athletic pass doesn't get you into park right negative this does not count for parking <laughs> still gonna pay the five bucks you gotta have okay. a place to go for training gotcha some schools don't charge <laughs> you gotta crack that wallet of yours who would that be who would name any names <coughs> all those in favor hi 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 everywhere i go they charge all right i recommend <laughs> approval of the revisions for the mass county board of education athletics policy motion second we have a motion and a second is there any discussion all right i would just like to say that yay the cheer policy has <laughs> been on the table for three years now so it's yeah. a celebration to get it off yes thank you everyone that worked on Everybody that do a toe touch yeah, it's not going to happen. All those in favor, please say aye. <coughs> aye. 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 I recommend uh, approval of the following contracts for services that, that are attached. Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second regarding contracts. Is there any discussion or question? I just have a question. Uh, like people who work in the schools I, i'm assuming for just the regular school year for custodial services that we're contracting with some of them for a month that i would just wonder what the rationale was for that Mr. Lowry indicated that he needed some additional help okay. and was willing to and, and wanted this particular person in other cases like students who felt more comfortable with with her now she's contracting at the same rate as you know, the 10 hour an hour rate if not a month's contract right okay i just didn't know yeah now it was basically but now that wasn't the only one i don't think the, there's some student custodians oh they're there. students okay and I, madison county career tech was the, the perfect example they had a custodial glove with the open heart surgery and then their 12 month custodian is being hopefully promoted to a plant manager so they're short and mr romine said hey you can give me two good kids and you know and help them and, and again we've got to start growing some of our own people inside for these jobs so that they can get a livable wage and insurance and that's kind of our, our goal for most of this <coughs> what is um what is that minority recruitment and development services? What does that look like? I mean, what what do we envision that? What is that? So we are that's Dr. Arlister McBride. That yeah. was that? I guess okay to say his name, but he's former <laughs> superintendent okay. um, in South Alabama, and he has worked with uh, a group of our teachers, aspiring administrators, and um, they've actually gone <coughs> and done a class project with that, and a group about twenty or thirty. So it's very similar to actually a class, a course, 
uh, that we're not charging you know tuition for for our people but it's really to provide that kind of that experience and so they'll actually are going to present their projects to the leadership team and kind of talk a little bit about there we've had really good you know we're going through and hiring the assistant principal process that that's coming up here in the next item or so but um, the feedback that we've gotten that it's been very good uh, preparation for them personnel agenda, I believe four of those people that were looking at hiring for what they were in that program. So. Okay. Um, All right, is there any further question or discussion regarding contracts for services? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Recommend approval of the following bid items as attached. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion regarding bids? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Recommend approval of the following personnel items and addendums as submitted. This is everything you sent to us plus this, mm -hmm. right? No. Okay. Uh, this is going to be to the personnel. Uh, receive the addendum already. This is the one that is because it was in my packet. Just a question on the addendum on number one on page two. Is that a retirement? Instead of just a oh, resignation. I'm sorry. I was going to on the. Uh, yes, ma'am. It's a retirement. Yes, ma okay, it's not indicated there, but no, it is. Not. Okay. I don't have any of that. Okay. I have it. But yes. Thank you. Then you retire. Oh, she was in school there when I taught. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm glad she didn't just get mad and went home. So that's good. All right. So we have a motion and a second, correct? And is that all? any further discussion regarding personnel items? All those in favor of the personnel items plus addendums, please say aye. 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 Got to, we have some other business. Yes. <coughs> pick some dates to meet in July. Oh, yes. Oh. Everybody whip out a calendar. 2018 and 9 <coughs> <or> what? <laughs> Let's just start with July. <laughs> By then, Dumb perhaps. Dates. <laughs> All right, if we stick to first and third Thursdays, um, the first in July would be the sixth, and that will fall kind of in the middle of a holiday week. Yeah, bad. I, I think that's probably unacceptable for most yeah <laughs> I know I'll, I'll be honest I'll say that's not plan exactly. to be in Huntsville or central office on that day so would y'all like to switch that to the 13th the 13th and the 27th and the, the 27th does that interfere with any of our what about trying to get people hired do we need to meet on the 10th it's actually two pretty good days in the camp. Third. Is that good for you? I mean, you know, this time of year, it's all about you. <laughs> God, really? You have to build them up anymore? I said Saturday the 15th. What? <laughs> Sorry, did I sound offended? <laughs> no, yes. You sound defensive is what you sounded. What'd you say? And then as far as we're going to have the one on the 28th, so we have the 13th, um, 28th, June 28th. Oh, that's right. You did set the meeting at 815. June 28th, personnel and family, and that's the after the breakfast. Yes. Right. That's yeah. right. 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 Right.
And what time is that again? I apologize. 8 15. Eight fifteen. Eight fifteen. Are we supposed to be there at seven fifteen? Yes, ma'am. Means you have to make that trek over the mountain early. I'll pick you up. Thank you. Be good. Thank you. you. See the thirteenth and eighteenth. Can we talk to the day? I think we were talking about possibly looking at the 18th or the mid 18th. Are we talking about July? July, yes. July 18th, 2017. Okay. And um, July 27th, 2017. I personally have another obligation every third Tuesday. Is there, is there a reason you wanted it on the 18th? Do we need the 13th, Ken? Do we need two meetings? The week of the 13th is uh, yeah, May. Okay. Oh. So. Can we do the 20th? Is that? Can we do the. Like the 27th? I'm no, good on the 20th. The 20th? That works. I mean, that's not a problem. That way we can get any new Get as many as we possibly can right okay. before they would have to start on that Monday. Okay. So. July 27th. July 27th. 720 and 27 you would like to have a, an actual board meeting. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, we could do 720 as an actual board meeting and we could set the 27 for personnel only if that's okay. Are you going to make it? So 720 and 727. 720 would be just a regular. And then in August, that would make <coughs> August 3rd and August 17th. No, sorry, can't count. What would we August do? 24th, if we did 1st and 3rd. Oh, look at that. There's five. One, two, three, four. There's five. Thursday, sorry. It's the simple stuff we do. So is everybody okay with 8 3 and 8 17? Uh -huh. And 8 3 would be a work session. 817 a board meeting is that yeah like that always happens but yeah 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 so september the, september also the first will fall in a week that most of us probably aren't going to be as far out of town but it would be the 7th and the 21st you said so, well, we we should have had one in August well, right by the time September comes it is now no longer about mr. Cuban and it gets all about oh, it. that's <laughs> right it's <laughs> no, it's no yeah. now yes He's now kicked to the proverbial curb and when would you like them in August and September well so we want to we're doing that July 27th just for now, but do we want to meet the next week on the third? That'd be three weeks in a row. Yeah, I was thinking if we did the tenth and the twenty-fourth, since it's all about me, the tenth and the twenty-fourth in August, I could do the first budget hearing on the twenty-fourth. That's fine. If that's fine with everybody else. So we're taking the seventeenth so out. Take the third yeah, off. That was my move birthday. it to the tenth. What are we taking right. off? August, we would change August 10th. from the 3rd and the 17th we'll to the 10th and the 24th. Three, three weeks in okay. row. Okay. Yeah. And that would help. And which one did you say would be your budget hearing? August 24th. She'd like them all to be her budget hearings, but. Because it's all about Yes. <laughs> what day do we have to vote in August? Then in September, we would have the second one. It's due by September 15th. August 15th. Okay. So we have to it's come due back. By, I'm sorry. September 15th? Right. So do we need to have one so September we would do 7th? What were your, I seventh mean, they'd be the 7th and 21st. If we can't do it the week of Labor Day, we can do it the 14th. It's due the 15th. So oh, I, don't, I don't think star. anybody has I won't be here on the 14th. Okay. With the, the 7th. 14th or the 7th? Uh, with the 14th, I won't be out of, out of but town. But you'll be here on the 7th? Uh -huh. You'll be here on the 7th? The oh, I never go anywhere. Miss <laughs> Stone. Yes. <laughs> You're always going. So in September, we're going with September 7th and the 21st? That would be great. And the 7th will need to be an actual board meeting, correct? Because we'll need to have the administrative session or whatever. The second September the 7th and the what? 21st. Okay. You want me to email these to you? We'll have, um, I'll just start at the beginning. 628, we meet at 07. 15 at Adtrans. 720 would be a board meeting. 727 would be a personnel only. 
810 is a work session, 824 would be budget hearing, 97 would be a board meeting, and 921 would be a work session. Can you go back to July again? What did you say about July 15th? What? No, July 20th is a board meeting, right. and July 27th okay, gotcha. okay. would be personnel only. Okay. <coughs> or so we're intent, our intent to use that weapon will be for personnel. Do we want to shoot October down while we're while we're having fun? Okay. So how about that will be going then. October twelfth and twenty <coughs> sixth? Sure. And then that's probably, are we far enough out at that point where everybody's comfortable? If we get any farther, all we do is change it. Okay. Yep. Good. Got it. Okay. So now. We are at executive session for pending litigation. Of course. <laughs> There's some. Um, sure. We have nothing that we would have to vote for when we came back in other than the. Um, adjourn. Adjourn. I suddenly forgot the word. It's been a while. So, do we have a motion to move into executive session? So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. I have a motion and second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.